What's up guys, it's Jim with the Waking TCG, bringing you guys a tournament reaction video today. Today we are going to be watching and commentating over the offline regionals that just happened today in Arlington, Texas. This is provided by Play TCG, um, the offline regional, and this is going to be a top cut match in the finals. It's going to be Moria against Katakuri in our final match, so this is a best two out of three. So we will be going up to three matches today, two at the least. Um, definitely probably the two most represented decks, I'd say right now. Katakuri being number one, at least as far as total players being. And Moria, I'd say following suit, uh, surprisingly, because I do still think Sakazuki is the best deck. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into this match. It looks like the first few turns were pretty standard. Katakuri actually chose to swing five and play a Kiku here. Moria not at three life yet, so that effect actually not going to activate after he pops it with Absalom. And then Katakuri going to take the hit with no trigger and take another 6k swing, which for me probably reads no 2ks in hand. Um, but he is going to at least get the Sanji trigger here and have another body to attack with. Looks like he is going to be either attacking into Leader or the Absalom here. Uh, he'll give him a 1k brand new into Trash. So if we do have a Moria coming in the next turn, um, we have a good 2 cost target. If we were not already playing Helmeppo, and then looks like he's actually going to pop the other one with a Gadatsu. So pretty strong turn there for Katakuri. Clearing the board, and Moria just actually going to use Leader Effect once again, trashing a Perona. And milling the top two. And just going to play a hog back and most likely get that Moria back as I'm sure he would have played it if he already had one in hand. So pretty valid turn there. Not going to really go for the board clear strategy. But he probably just didn't have the means of doing it. And he's actually just going to play a Kuzan. Draw one and pass the Katakuri here. Kuzan, probably one of the best cards in this matchup. Uh, if I had to guess. Uh, I don't I don't play these either of these decks. So I'm not a 100% expert but... For what I've been told, Kuzan is a menace in this matchup. Menace against yellow in general, but he'll play 7 Mom. Uh, will actually choose to give Katakuri a life as he swings 5 with leader Sanji. And another 6 with Gadatsu. He's going to counter out of both and then end up taking the 6 from Gadatsu. Now, pretty solid board and we know he has Moria in hand. So Moria in a really solid spot here because the odds are, especially with Kuzan, it's going to be definitely very... <coughs> Excuse me. Definitely very possible to clear this 7 cost Charlotte Linlin. But he will actually just accept that 5 to 5 with Sanji. I'm going to reduce the Linlin here. So we are definitely going to KO that after we swing 5k to lead. Katakuri deciding if he wants to counter out or take. Uh, looks like he's going to take and that is a trigger. It's going to be an Amaru. Trashes two Onamis and gets another life. Which is definitely a little annoying. Because now we have to deal with more obnoxious triggers. Like that one, um, <laughs> right on time. Uh, and then we're actually going to drop a Suru and the Moria, playing Luchi over Suru, and then Helmepo over Sindri. KOing that Big Mom, and developing a monstrous board at the same time. Um, a cost Moria, right, is the reason Black is such a menace, in my opinion. Um, but he's actually going to drop 10 Mom, uh, who would have guessed, Trashing and gaining a life, swinging five most likely to the Kuzan if I had to guess as that is the biggest threat that he has to deal with at this moment in time. He's actually going to give him a 2k Perona. Looks like he has another 2k and Suru in hand if he wanted to get rid of it, but with two cards in hand, it's probably just not worth it. So I'm going to let that go. And if we have another Moria this turn, we're probably in a pretty solid spot, but it doesn't look like he draws into one. So we got two 2ks and a Sabo from what I can see there. So now on Tendon, um, probably not going to be able to remove this Big Mom, so we're just going to go aggro here. Fortunately, no trigger there on that 7k swing. And we have a lot of good swings left here, especially as we can still use Moria Effect if we wanted to use something like a Perona if he had enough cards in hand. But looks like he will be going 8. I'm not sure if that's at leader. It looks like that is at leader. No effect there. He'll go 9 with Moria. He will take and is this just the rest on Hogback? That is definitely a bit of a risky play but he's actually just going to go 6 with Hogback. Just check the hand for 2k's as he does need to give him 1 to not uh, die here. Yeah and then just going to play the Sabo. The completely safe option as you cannot remove it with the Maru this turn. 
and um, you can, sorry, not Amaru, I meant Reject, but you can also not rest it with Amaru. Um, so he is completely safe this turn, and there's a very good chance he can go for game next turn. And Katakuri going to choose to look at the Moria's Trash right now, probably just looking at how many 2Ks we have, and with two cards in hand, um, I'm almost positive both of those are 2Ks. So he's actually going to go 8 at leader, uh, look at his life, and he will take. So Katakuri now knows what that card that just want to do his hand is. Looks like it was a brand new. And um, with that knowledge in mind, he knows he does not have three 2Ks in hand. So he can uh, put down Dawn accordingly. So if this is not double 2K, 1K, he is actually going to have to take this hit. But with only a pudding and a big mom left, yeah, that is going to be the game. As there is no way to heal and no way to end the game or survive next turn, Katakuri just going to forfeit that and make this one go a little bit faster. So they are going to actually shuffle up here, and I'm assuming since Katakuri lost, he will be choosing to go second. Which is, uh, I think we want to go in this matchup. I could be wrong. I know, it looks like he actually chose to go first. Yeah, I was completely wrong. So it looks like we're choosing that curve to play stuff like Peros Pero and Big Mom Mom Curve, which is probably a lot stronger than getting two 10 cost mom as with the Mori on board and stuff sometimes it just really isn't the best card to play. Um, gonna play that Peros Pero out on Curve. And Moria now on four Dawn taking off his main curve. He'll drop a Suru and then just play the Absalom from Trash off of Leader Effect. Pretty solid, although we do get a search with that Peros Pero, so it is not the end of the world for Katakuri here. And looking at the hand and the top three, it looks like he's actually just going to grab another Peros Pero, so pretty solid there. And he's actually going to take the hit as well with no trigger. Now on 5 Dawn, if we do have a Godatsu, we could just choose to pop that Absalom. Or if we have a 4 cost, which it looks like he does have, we're probably just going to use Leader Effect. Moria will actually choose to take, and then he'll actually play a Pudding. And then probably just into that Peros Sparrow that he just searched out. So not a bad play there whatsoever. Now Moria on 6 Dawn. Looks like we do have the Ice Age in hand, so if... Uh, Katakuri is planning to drop anything big next turn, like a 7 cost mom, which we are probably expecting. It's going to be pretty easy to get rid of it. And going to now swing 6k at lead. Just a little 2k check. Katakuri does not know what that top life is as he just put it to the bottom. So he's going to take it. Let's see what we get. It is a Paro Sparrow. Uh, that is three Paro Sparrows this game. And he's going to trash the Amaru. Um, now with a pretty devastating board that we can't really get rid of unless we have a Luchi and a couple cost reductions. Uh, he'll actually counter out of the five from Banu. Now we're just going to go Mori effect, play out a Perona, which is always great. He'll trash a reject from hand and take getting a Sanji trigger. Um, and I'm just going to snap the big mom. That was really fast. <laughs> and he would choose to give him a life and then just going to swing with Pero Sparrow. Um, looks like uh, going to think about it here as his hand is not the biggest ever going to swing again with Peros Pero he will take uh, trying to swing with the Sanji as well but looks like we have a trigger to let resolve first both players playing actually pretty fast this game but he's actually going to think about this trigger for a while here um, and I'm just going to take it to hand uh, and now Sanji going to swing 5 here looks like we get a 2k Perona and you're gonna swing with Katakuri and he's gonna counter out with a Sindri. So now on, I think this is eight Dawn, if we have a Moria, that is going to be mostly the best card to play. Uh, doesn't look like we have it though, just a ton of events and a Sabo, unfortunately. So Katakuri at three life here and a pretty devastating board. This is an actual awkward spot for Moria as we do not have a good board and we have the same amount of life and Katakuri going into next turn is definitely going to at least take all the cards out of our hand or put us down to a really low uh, life total, which is going to be a big problem when cards like Amaru and a Reject are in the game. So just going to let that Sanji go from the 5k swing. It doesn't want to give too much counter out of hand. So he's actually going to choose to probably just use leader effect, uh, maybe playing something like a Hogback from Trash. Yeah, looks like he is going to play the Hogback. Send back Sindri and an event and grab a Prona to hand. 
No more Oh no, there is a more trash. I actually chose not to grab it. Probably fearing uh, for his life next turn as he does get a Satori trigger. Which is rough. Uh, going to play Sabo here. So at least he is safe from dying next turn. Most likely. Obviously we're not in a great spot. But with Sabo on board, we're not really in a threat of losing. But we are pretty much in threat of imminent death. So going to swing five. Uh, I'm going to counter out with a 1 and 2 more cards in hand, one of which his opponent knows is a Perona. So, I'm going to actually trash the pudding for another 7 bomb. Uh, say, are you going to take or give me a life? He's actually going to choose to take, which is very risky here. Um, and at this point, we have a pretty scary board to deal with, especially considering the fact Katakuri Swing is already swinging for 7, so he'll go 5 at Perona. Interesting. Um, he'll actually take, go another 5 with Satori. And they're probably just going to go 8-8 eight, eight, if I had to guess. Um, if he doesn't have putting in hand yet. Going to go 8, just check his last life. Uh, he will choose to take and then go another 8 and he'll actually counter out of that with pretty much his whole hand. Now with one card remaining, I don't even know if a Mori in hand could save you at this point. Looks like a, he gets a Sabo. That could possibly save you like not to die next turn but realistically this game is pretty much over so he knows that and he has to go for game here which he is going to do katakuri did put a card to the bottom of the life earlier this game so if that is something like a beige or namaru this game is 100 percent a wrap uh he's going to take and yeah it's actually the zero cost event which is another great option to put in your final life uh so he will get that life back no trigger there and at the ak swing he will easily counter out of that and that is going to be game two so we are now at one one going into our final match and let's go ahead and get right into that i assume moria is going to choose first going to shuffle these hands up here and get into this final match uh Kyrie going to be placing the life and it looks like shuffling the Moria's deck. Yeah, Moria did choose to go first. Gonna get the perfect Sindri off the top. Looks like we got an Absalom and a Hogback in Trash already. So, great start for Moria. Has a play next turn right off the bat if he wants to play just a Hogback, possibly. Maybe Trash or Perona from hand to get a card out of Katakuri's hand, which I think he's gonna do here. Now he's gonna actually get rid of the Hogback and play the just play the Absalom. KO the uh, putting if she were to do any damage, which I don't really think she would, but gonna go ahead and take that, no trigger. Looks like he was thinking about it for a second, but that was not a trigger at the end of the day. Now for Dawn, we're either gonna swing seven play Prospero, or possibly play something like, yeah, swing five, play a, um, a an Okiku if I had to guess. So he's actually gonna take that. Oh, it's actually gonna be a pudding, probably a pudding into a Prospero. So going to search the top, grab a seven mom, and then there is the Pero Sparrow, as we were saying. Now, where are you going to swing five? Uh, going to actually choose to take. He does not know what that life is, and it is not a trigger. Uh, now going to probably remove this board if he can. He does not have another Absalom in Trash, but he would need a little bit of cost reduction to get rid of this Pero Sparrow if he really wanted to. He does have the Great Eruption in hand. Looks like he's actually going to, drop, going to drop the brand new. He only has one target with the Borsalino, so he will just quickly grab that. Now going at six and leader effect. Going to trash the Absalom and play the Hog back. Sending two back, the Suru and the Borsalino. And choosing to grab most likely the 8 cost Moria if he does not have one in hand. Looks like he does already have one in hand. But yeah, he's going to choose to grab it. And now Katakuri on six Dawn here. I'm going to swing at 5 with Perospero, most likely at Absalom, if I had to guess. I'm going to think about this for a sec and just give a 2k with Sindri. Now 7 at Absalom. Yeah, that is going to be an immediate take. And then going to just play the Gadatsu to pop the hot back. So just clearing the board here and developing a 6k body of our own. Not a bad spot here. And Katakuri is still at 3 life, so we're pretty relatively healthy. Especially considering Moria does not really have a scary board right now. But now on 7 Dawn, we cannot play Cost Moria. But what we can do is develop at least two bodies this turn and possibly remove his board. There are two Luchis in Trash, so if we don't have a Luchi in hand, it's going to be a little bit harder to remove. But yeah, going to go 5, most likely at the Peros Sparrow. Peros. Going to give him a 2k out of that, so he'll help Meppo onto the Godatsu, bringing it down to a 2 cost. 
and then going to use leader effect, playing out the Absalom, popping that guy, and most likely swinging at the Perospero as well here. So we will require another 2k if you want to get out of this. Oh no, he's actually going to swing at life. And then category player, deciding if he wants to get out of this one. Uh, he probably, I think he knows what that trigger is. Uh, yeah, so he's actually going to choose to give him a Beige 2k. And then it passing back to him now on 8 Dawn. That is going to be a 7 cost mom. And that other Dawn's probably just going on leader for leader effect. Going to actually choose to give him a life. Even though he has so much more life than him. Which is actually interesting to me. He'll go 5 and give him a 1k. And then 7 to lead he will take. So now on... 9 Dawn for Moria. We do have the 8 cost if we want to play it. And judging by this 5k swing, I think we're going to go for it. Uh, he's going to get that and get another 7 mom into him. Which, with the 10 cost mom, he's probably not going to play it. But yeah, there's a 5k swing popping the Absalom. Good thing we already swung with it, so it's not too big of a deal. But going to actually play the Moria into Luchi into Helmeppo. And KOing both of them there. So, this... Kind of looks like a wrap, I'm not going to lie. He can't play the 10 cost mom here and put him in a bit of a scary spot next turn, especially with, if he has reject in hand or something like that. Um, so if Moria can't finish him off this next turn, we're, uh, we might be looking good. I'm going to swing 5 here. We'll give him a 2k Shigi. And now with a total of 4 cards in hand, I think that is... Looks like he does have the Sabo, though, so I think Katakuri's dreams of ending the game next turn are pretty much sealed with that, but, you know, we are trigger central, so there's a chance that swinging at uh, life right now gets us, like, double Okiku or something crazy, so he'll actually go six to lead. Katakuri gonna choose the take. That is a Peros Pero off the life that we got off of the 10 cost Big Mom. Trashing the 7 cost Lin Lin that he actually already knew was in hand, so not giving his opponent any more information. Probably the best card to trash there, as I don't think we're actually ever playing that card at this point in the game. And now we have to think, uh, when we're swinging 8 and using the leader effect, uh, what is he going to bring out here? He's going to actually choose to bring out a Hogback over the Sindri, using the Hogback effect to actually grab back a Perona 2k, so... Not bad here, just bunkering up if uh, Katakuri goes for game next turn. He's going to take, there is the Sanji trigger, trashing another 7 cost Big Mom. So he can't really go for game this turn, considering we have a blocker and one life still. So there is the Sabo, as we predicted, uh, making it pretty much impossible to win next turn. And he's actually going to choose the pass without swinging with Moria. I think that was smart, because as I was saying, say that last life is an Okiku, now we have a chance to go for game next turn. Um, he did get two characters from life, obviously, but a third might be a little rough. But, uh, you know, Katakuri things, it, that type of stuff does happen, and you do have to play around it. That's just how it is. So, right now, he can't actually rest any blockers with the Maru. He can't pop Sabo with Reject. But what he can do is maybe swing with Big Mom here. Say he takes the life. Now we reject that life. Um, and then we're swinging for game with the rest of our board. And if you can't counter out of that with three cards in hand, then we actually are in a decent spot here. But we do know he has the 2k Perona and I think a few other counters in that hand. So I'm going to actually choose just to go seven lead first. Look at his own life, which is interesting. Maybe he thinks he can survive one more turn. Looking at his own life here makes me think he's not going for game. Because if I were going for game, I would definitely look at the opponent's life. We're going to look at it again. I don't know if that's legal, but it <laughs> doesn't really matter at this point. So with the 7k, it looks like he's got two puddings and a Sabo, so he can definitely counter out of this. But obviously if he does, he's left with one card in hand. And you never really want to be left with one card in hand because then we're just swinging sevens. And we know we it's easier to get lethal. But going to think about it here. If he takes, he does ha he does play right into the reject if he takes. And um, obviously that is a rough spot. He does have the Sabo blocker up still, but with three swings on board, it's a little scary. Um, I think Katakuri needs to go for game right now. I don't really see a scenario where you're living next turn, but he's actually going to think about this. This is the finals of the Arlington offline regional. So 
Right, you have a lot of times left. There's actually infinite time in the finals right now. They don't actually time them out, but they've been playing fast enough. Um, so you definitely got a whole lot of time. We haven't really been thinking like crazy these games, so might as well use these final crucial turns to think about our plays here. So looks like you're going to lay out 4 Dawn. That could be 4 Dawn for a reject. It is a big choice here, but realistically, are we really surviving next turn? Um, I'm going to say the answer to that is no. He's actually going to put 5 on Peril Sparrow. And go 10 to leader. Um, so I think that's reading that he does not have a reject. Because then he has a, another 4. So he can go, five, he can go 10, 9, 12. <clears throat> Which, if you can counter out of this, yeah, there's the counter. And with that, it is pretty much uh, game sealed. One card in hand. Even if that were, say, a reject, uh, he's going to have the counter in hand to at least counter out of the Sanji swing and then just block the Big Mom swing with our Sabo. So we'll just go 12 to Luchi and then play the Kiku out, which uh, is not saving us this next turn. We do have the Sanji standing still. But uh, when we're going 9 off rip, uh, yeah, he's going to get nothing from life. And that is actually going to be the game. So Moria winning the regional. Congrats to Jesse B on that victory. Um, I know a lot of people do not like to see Katakuri win. Uh, I'm not going to say where I, I, I stand in that argument. But definitely happy to see Moria win. Uh, Especially for my boy, uh, Wraith was at this tournament as well. So he did pretty decent 7-3. and three. I'm sure he'll talk to you guys about it in a later video. But anyways, thank you guys for watching this one. And thank you everybody for uh, having this great production for Play TCG. Great tournament. Was a lot of fun to watch. Anyways, you guys have a great day. I'm going to head out of here. Peace.